Hello, in this video we will look into control using reinforcement learning. In order to design controller using the reinforcement learning, we will first understand what is the, the input output requirement of the reinforcement learning so that we can uh, uh, make the controller case as a reinforcement learning case. So in order to understand the reinforcement learning framework, uh, it is dynamic programming with rewards and penalties. Um, rewards and penalties I will explain a little later, but let us understand what this particular observation and action space is when this is um, uh, a reinforcement learning agent. The input to the agent is observations and the output is actions. So first thing is th these are certain key components. The first is to describe what is my environment. The environment as we had looked into earlier was that in our case it is the system under a particular system or a process under a given environment is, is under the correct uh, under the actual environment. And this describes my reinforcement learning environment, all right. So environment is an actual environment or a simulated, we can consider as of now as a simulated environment taking care of the which, which encamp, encompasses system um, completely. Now in this case, um, there is an agent which is more or less like a computing uh, system which is taking care of describe dis, uh, dis, uh, which is taking care of uh, the algorithm description of the RL agent. Now here comes the states of the environment. What is the state? It is different from the state of the uh, system or a process. The way we used to describe the system of system states as x dot and the system equations at a x plus b u and y is equal to cx, in this our x used to be the state of the system, correct. Now this system, this particular state is the state of the environment which encompasses uh, could be a set of observations, set of actions or something else or some internal states of the system, some internal a state of the environment or some interaction between system and the actual environment and so on and so forth. So the environment state we will have to describe what it is, but at this moment it is, it is, uh, it is important to understand that it is different from the state of the system that we call upon, all right. Something similar we have actions. Now actions um, actions you can ca call it as um, the control inputs given to the system as, as a basic uh, understanding of the system. So we have this particular control inputs given to the system whereas in the RL agent case this terminology is more or less said as action. Now action directly mapping to input may or may not be there, all right, because this particular action is given to the environment and this environment cons consists of the actual environment and system under the actual environment. So we will have to figure out what this action space we are talking about depending upon the objective that we set for the, con for the controller or a control system objective. Something similar is about observations, these observations we can for the system terminology wise, these observations were the measurements uh, taken from the uh, sensors or the output uh, that we are getting as y is equal to cx form. But these observations again are out of the environment, all right, are the output, output uh, signals that are being given to the agent now. Now these observations again comprises of could be the measurements taken, could be some outputs or the state of the system itself, sorry state of the environment now, alright. 
uh, which may which we, when we'll start discussing about certain examples it will be easier for you to to understand uh, what we are talking in terms of the observation and the uh, observation uh, observation here and the actions being taken by the agent uh, once we have the set of observations and based on that certain actions have been taken so for example in this particular environment i had one observation for which i had taken a particular action i have set of observations based on which we have the set of actions being taken now this set of actions that have been taken in sequence are these a good are are these are these uh, taking care of the control objective that we have set who will tell us that particular thing which is coming up from the policy is taken care by the rewards and the penalties all right in all what we had done in the earlier case we'll take a look at it and try to put it in the rl framework so that it is easier to understand what was the database approach and what is the rl agent based approach that we are considering here so more or less to understand in a very uh, very simplistic way the policy is something that will decide the mapping between the observations and the actions given a particular state or a given uh, state of the environment or the sequence of the states of the environment all right let's take certain illustrations to understand what is observation what is action in the control terminology that we have been taking we have been looking at it let's take a simple example of a first order system the transfer function we can say it as a two parameter model which is k by s plus a where the two parameters are k and a in this case we are considering that the model of the system is first order system and we are aware about this particular one okay we will relax that particular assumption and we'll see what what happens now when i represent this in terms of the state space in uh, state space form then my system representation becomes something like this minus a, my a matrix is minus a b matrix is just the unity c matrix is the gain of the system and d is zero in this case so this particular transfer function when we represent in the state space form looks like this fair enough but at the same time a, this particular form gives me the idea of the state of the system all right mind it we are talking about state of the system all right not the state that the rl agent uh, considers so here is the change in the terminologies and that's what i am bringing out here all right so in the previous case for the data driven pid control what we were considering as we were we were having some system which was um uh, uh which for which the model is unknown and we were designing controller with the help of pid control so we were looking into tuning kp ki and kd which are the proportional integral and derivative gates all right so we were what we were doing were was we are keep, we were keeping some information vector we described an information vector and that vector uh, will give me the output vector which is kp ki and kd all right so this is how depending upon certain state of the system or state of the environment we were took, looking into um, into describing what should be my kp ki and kd for that particular state for a particular control objective which was rise time lowering the uh, reducing the rise time objective all right so we are also aware about the input output terminology so we have this particular input given by the the uh, signal u and the output of the system is given by uh, the variable y here all right so what we have is in the normal uh, when the transfer function is your first order transfer function which we just spoke about and we are giving the input the set point as some step input then we know that the output looks like uh, with respect to time the output may be 
something uh, if if i have a pid controller sitting there then the output may be something like um, the uh, decaying sinusoid or or um, exponential or 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 any other form that we have we, that we have already studied about depending upon the different kp ki and kd values all right so we are not talking about this thing all right for this particular output generation we have the input u given as um, the opposite of this it is easier to draw it in this case uh, for the decaying sinusoid case my my input given control input given was this something similar we have uh, for the exponential rise case we had the input given control input given something like this we know that if it is proportional uh, only a proportional controller then we will have a steady state error if it is a kp and ki terms both existing then steady state error can be reduced so different values of kp ki K, kd will give you a different output curve all right so when we were talking about data driven pid control when the case is when the plant model is un, is unavailable in this drawings in these plots we were considering that the state uh, the system is first order system and we were able to do it but for example if i do not know the system's uh, system model and i am designing kpki kd for it then what happens then i will have to go with a data driven method where we what we were doing was we were considering some samples of u of k u of k minus 1 u of k minus 2 and we, some samples of y of k minus 2 y of k and y of sorry k minus 1 and y of k and some previous history of y and some previous history of u we were considering in order to call it as phi of k which was my information vector now this is what we are going to call it as the observation in the rl terminology observation is something in some in this is one example of observation all right so what is the or or we can call it as even we can call it as a state of the system depending of state of the no sorry state of the environment now now how am i describing the state it depends upon what is the information vector set that elements of the information vector that i have considered so here we have this controller sitting here and this was my entire environment of course the environment may be having also disturbances acting on the plant so am i modeling the disturbances let's not talk about that right now so my output was my observation would be depend upon what is my state and something else depending upon let's say what is my ysp as well all right and the output vector or the action was can be given by okay i have this kp ki and kd so given this state of the environment what is my action if i am able to come up with a proper mapping between the observation and action then i have a policy available now how will i come up with this particular policy which is the mapping from observation to action is what the rl algorithm does now if this particular policy is um, to be described is to be designed then i need to have a proper way of understanding how am i going to create this policy from the given data available so i will have different obs observations available observation 1 observation 2 observation 3 which i can call it as i can map it to the state of the environment s1 s2 i can derive this what is my state i do not know right now because my control objective in this case is not set we'll take a complete example to understand this later all right so now this particular state at this moment 
at this moment of course we what we have done here our observations or the state are finite all right need to be finite in order to describe this policy so if it is a disc we have first discretized it fair enough now even though we have discretized it u of k can take any value between say minus 10 to plus 10 unless we describe this particular minus 10 to plus 10 in again quantized levels we will not be able to say that my observation space is finite so this observation space and the action space something similar with action space my kp can say can take values from 0 to 2 ki can take some values from um, 0 to so 2.1 minus 0 0.1 to 0.1 say and sorry um, usually these gain values are 0 so we'll consider 0 to this and kd can take values from 0 to again some some uh, some some one say say let's say one all right so now i have this particular constraints given to the kpk and kd values because i know that there is no point in considering a very large values of kp and and something similar uh, to k and kd but even then there is there are infinite values of kp that it can consider so then my action space is very large. How will I come up with a policy which will describe, okay, what is going to be, what is the, the whether the, the action that has been taken given a particular state is, was a good action or a bad action. So if I'm at state S1 and I have taken action A1, which is what? Some values of Kp1, Kp, Ki1 and Kd1. One. So this way we will have to limit our action space or cut down it to saying that okay my action space is finite. So then I will need require to quantize this Kp, Ki and Kd. Now with this quantized steps my, ste my action space is limited, is finite, observation space is finite, then I will be, ab be able to describe a reward reward function which will say okay when I was at state S1 I took A1 which led me to reach to state S2 and say SK I have reached all right. So at k equal to 1 my state was 1 and I have taken this particular sequence of steps all right. So A of k then A of A of 1 then A of 2 uh, sorry a of 2 and so on which led me to this particular sequence for k horizon k discrete steps so within that case discrete step is my control objective getting satisfied or not is what will tell me okay my reward is is it a reward or a penalty so this way we will be <coughs> This way we will be able to describe the control requirement in terms of the reinforcement learning environment. It is similar to what we did in case of the data driven PID control. In case of the data driven PID control, we figured out putting the KP, KI, KD values depending upon what my information vector would be. Now in case of the reinforcement learning, we are coming up with a mapping between the observation and the action and learning this particular policy based on a training data available to us. All right. So putting things together, if I consider in a different setting where I am not having the, the understanding of the plant, okay, I model of understanding of the plant as in I do not know the model of the plant. I do not have the representation of a plant or a system or a process that we talk about. At the same time, I do not want to freeze, uh, freeze the form of the controller, which is PID. Then also I will be able to, then also I will be able to, uh, to put the things in terms of the RL framework. Given a particular control objective, I can consider 
okay, I, my environment is giving me certain observations which are going to the RL agent, which is making sure that there is some policy coming up, which is, which is being learned. Of course, we will have a training data as well as a test data. So with the help of the training data, this policy is coming up, which is giving me output as the actions to be given to the environment. These actions will then drive the input to the system or a process. And these inputs are my is are my u vector and these are my output vector y. So then we will be able to figure out whether my uh, straight trajectory that uh, now, now I am talking about state of the system, right? I have the state system state trajectory is optimal in some way or not. Now when we are saying trajectory, this is time stamped or in, say, in case of the, uh, in case of the uh, discrete, time, discrete time k, this is we are talking about state 1 to going up to state k. So this particular trajectory is a desired trajectory or not. This is what we would like to uh, optimize it and, and, and this forms into the RL network. RL, um, uh, learning learning for framework now. Now what we are, if I compare the uh, classical control design methods or um, the controller or the model base or what we had here was we, uh, if till, till this particular week we were looking into model based control. Now it is model free control, then also we look into considering designing the controller through the help of the RL agent such that my system trajectory form is the one that I am looking at the uh, desired trajectory. So it is just not the output uh, which is the set point value or what not, but how am I approaching the output can also be, uh, can also be designed and can, can also be optimized with the help of the learning agents now. All right. Let us try understanding further into what comes under the training phase. We have two things now, one is actor and a critic. Now I am talking about what comes under the RL algorithm typically. So this is actor and a critic way because I have to design a policy but at the same time I do not know what the values are going to be. Um, so that is something needs to be uh, decided. Now when I am considering the uh, actor responsibility, I will consider that it is, uh, it is coming up with some kind of a policy which is modeled using an actor network. So each of this actor and critic is a network, uh, neural network I can consider. Now this particular actor network is responsible for giving me a policy. All right, and it will also do the maximizing this particular expected return by optimizing this policy because I will have various different uh, uh, data set in the data set we have observations and actions being paired up. Now when I am doing the maximizing these particular returns, now what are these expect these particular returns? This is being decided by the reward policy. So we will have to decide what is my reward. Now when I am calculating going from a particular state 1 to reaching to the state s of k, I can follow a particular trajectory. But in a second case, I can go from s1 to s of k through s of k through some other state. So this was, this was my one trajectory, this is my one trajectory 1, this is another trajectory 2. So starting this initial state is same, final state is same, but the path that I followed to reach or the trajectory that I followed to reach to this initial, to this particular final state could be different. Now whether this trajectory is good or that trajectory is good need to be figured out with the help of values associated with it. Now this value is evaluated by the critic here. And again, this is going to do be 
uh, done with the help of a network, critic network. And this value calculation, this value function calculation when I am going from S of 1 to S of 2 in this case, this particular state, this particular S of 2 would be different from this S of 2 because I have taken certain different actions over there, all right. So that is something will be, uh, will be calculated by the critic. Now the total value of this particular trajectory, this particular trajectory will decide whether uh, it is a, it's, it's a good policy that we followed in terms of going from this particular taking this these set of actions a of 1 to a of 2 to a of a of k minus 1 or this set of actions that I have taken here. So this is how my actor is going to refine its policy based on the critic which is giving me the value of a particular trajectory and we will explore all kinds of these trajectories depending upon what the data set or the training da data that I already have. And this is how then we will keep up getting a particular policy which is an optimized policy from a, from an, uh, from a run, uh, reinforcement learning method. We will take up an example in, uh, in my next video, see you then.